I'm Jim Blair, and today I want to talk to you about drop pipe. So what is drop pipe? It's the production pipe that your submersible pump hangs on in your well. And there are three different options, so let's get into it. I can't wait to show you the third option. It's a game changer. For residential wells, the standard is PVC pipe. Back when I first started working on wells, we used Schedule 80. But nowadays, pretty much everybody switched over to Schedule 120 because it's a thicker, stronger pipe that can handle the stresses a lot better. And in order to get the maximum strength out of the pipe, we use a stainless steel coupling that's specifically designed for the job. The taper on the threads is designed to perfectly match the taper on the threads on your PVC pipe. It's a great product. It's got a lot of good applications. But there are three main things we must avoid when using PVC pipe. The first problem is that this pipe should not be used on deep sets. For every 100 feet of pipe, you add up 43.3 PSI to the system. And if you have a pressure tank on your well, that adds another 60 PSI. So if you have a submersible pump set 500 feet deep with a pressure tank on it, that adds up to 276 PSI. You can easily see how going deep can cause the pressure to get too high, and that can cause the pipe to burst. The second problem is tensile strength. As you can imagine, the deeper you go, there's more and more pull trying to pull this pipe apart. Now the pipe's actually pretty strong, but the weak point is the threads. Imagine if you had a thousand pounds of pull on that little bit of plastic. That's a stress point that has failed many times. Now each manufacturer has a different recommendation depending upon the size of the pipe. But most of them range from about 500 feet for one inch down to about 375 feet for two inch. The third problem is heat. Now if your pump runs out of water, you should have a pump saver or similar device that cuts the pump off. But if you don't, or if it fails, the pump keeps running and the heat that's generated can damage your pipe. And that's how you get a pipe that looks like this. When the threads fail, the pump can drop off the bottom. Now I know a lot of well guys like to go fishing, but they'd rather be out on a lake than running fishing tools down your well trying to get your pump to bite. Before PVC was introduced back in the 1970s, everybody used galvanized pipe. And it's still used today as the industry standard for commercial wells. As you can imagine, this pipe is really strong. But steel pipe is going to rust out over time, and the length of time depends on the quality of your water. But we see an average of anywhere from five to 10 years. Every time we pull a commercial well, we expect to have to replace some of the pipe. As holes develop in the pipe, your electricity bill goes up because you're just dumping water back into the well. You're also allowing air to get into your water system that you have to deal with. So you can use galvanized pipe, just know that there will be problems down the road. Now I'm ready to show you the third option, and when you see it, it'll knock your socks off. This is a lay flat hose, and it's made just like a fire hose, but it's designed specifically for submersible pumps. It's NSF 61 approved for potable water, and the state of Texas has approved its use in both domestic and public supply wells. It can handle heat up to 160 degrees Fahrenheit and any water with a pH between four and nine. I'm sure you've all used that cheap lay flat hose from the hardware store that's always kinking and it's not very strong. Well, this ain't that hose. First of all, it can't kink. It's hanging straight down in the well, so you can forget about that issue. But how strong is it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's find out. Now we're gonna test this piece of two inch bore line. It has a working rating of 430 PSI and a theoretical burst pressure of 920 PSI. So we're gonna hook it up to the pressure washer and see if it can handle the pressure. Now, we've evacuated all the air out of the line, so when it blows up, it won't act like a bomb. Now we're pressured up to about 50 PSI, and that's more pressure than you've got in your car tires. And this hose, it already feels like steel. Now this hose is designed to swell diametrically 15%, and that's good because down in your well, that's gonna get bigger, and that's gonna reduce your friction loss. Now let's see what happens when we keep going. Now we're up to 430 PSI. That's the rated working pressure on this hose. That's how much pressure we'd have on a pump set a thousand feet deep. That's a lot of pressure, but this hose is handling it just fine. Let's keep going and see where it pops.
was a lot of fun. You can see the hose burst at 820 PSI, and that's like your pump was set at 1,900 feet deep. Clearly, it's a pretty dang strong hose. Now, you'll notice that the hose ripped lengthwise, and that's designed to do that so that if you ever somehow manage to break the hose down in the well, you still can pull the pump. But the question is, how strong is it? Let's find out. Okay, now here's our setup. We have that hose that we just blew up with 820 PSI, and we're gonna see how much load it can handle. Now, the rated working load of this hose is 3,500 pounds. That's without a hole in it. Now, if you happen to have your pump set, and you happen to blow this up down above your pump, that's probably the most likely place it would blow up because that's where the pressure is highest. You'd only have the weight of the pump below it. That's about 100 pounds. Right now, I've got 1,000 pounds of pull on this, and it's, not, it's obviously handling that just fine. So you don't have to worry your pump's coming out of the hole. But let's say somehow you are able to put some damage into it up near the top, and you might have 1,000 feet of hose hanging below that. Well, that's 2,600 pounds, assuming it's full of water and there's no water in the well. The hose is rated for 3,500 pounds, so it should handle it. But we're going to find out with a damaged hose, what can it handle? All right, so we had a problem. This truck's rated to pull 6,000 pounds. We got 6,740 pounds out of it, single line. Didn't do a dang thing to this hose. So we had to reconfigure. We double lined it now. So now the gauge is gonna read half of the actual load. So we're gonna have to double whatever we see on the gauge. Let's pull this thing apart, see where it breaks. Okay, we managed to break it, but I want to point something out. We did not break it up here where we blew it apart. When you blow it apart like that, it does not damage the vertical strands. It had a clean break down here. Some pretty dang strong hose. I don't even know how much load it took before it blew it up. Let's go back and look at the slow-mo and find out. When we slow the video down, we can see that the maximum load was 6,660 pounds. But because the cable was double lined, we have to double the load. That adds up to 13,320 pounds. I don't think you have to worry about dropping your pump with this stuff. It's certainly better than that old lay flat hose you bought at the hardware store. But keep in mind that there are several manufacturers for this type of hose, and each has a different pressure and tensile rating for each size hose. You can work with your project manager to choose the right option for your well. While this product has been on the market for decades, we were hesitant to use it because of the cumbersome installation methods. After a few years of thinking, we finally worked with an equipment manufacturer to design a truck specifically for this purpose. And now we have this awesome truck that can reel the hose in and out of your well. A big shout out to the guys at TDH Manufacturing for this awesome design and build. We can drop a weight down the inside of the hose and break off a plug at the bottom that allows the water to drain out. Then we just reel up the hose and wire together. It takes about 15 minutes to reel up a pump from 800 feet. With this setup, we can pull and set a pump in about an hour, regardless of the depth or size. One of the things I love about this setup is that the hose and wire stay together when we pull your pump. We reel them up on our big drum and they don't lay in the dirt. This helps us keep bacteria out of your well. And if you're one of those customers with a well that we can't reach with our service truck, this hose is the only way to go. We can set up our service truck a good distance away from your well and run that hose through a series of pulleys that we tie to a tree or a post. We have a roller we can set up over your wellhead so we can set your pump. We no longer have to rent a crane, reach over your house to be able to service your well. As you can see here, we're setting this pump under a windmill without having to lower the tower down. We will work with you and your situation to figure out a better way to service your submersible pump. So those are the options we have for your drop pipe. If you've got any questions, we're ready to help. 
And thank you for letting us be your well man.